Hello guys and welcome to a new Warno video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a 2 vs 2 on 2 ways and in this one I'm going to be playing with the 2nd Panzer Grenadier Division. I'm going to be joined by Helvel on my team who is using the 2nd Panzer Grenadier Division as well and we're up against St. Blindfire and Adoy who are going to be using the 7th Panzer Division and the 4th Mottschutzen Division, both of those being the East German Divisions of course. So I wanted to show you guys this replay today because it gives me a chance to show off the 2nd Panzergren to their fullest extent. In the last video that I did with the 2nd Panzergrenadier, it was more to do with the strategies that I was employing rather than the division itself. So today we're going to really take a look at the full-scale capability of the 2nd Panzergren, its combination of decent heavy armor, uh, decent sort of mechanized armor as well as really strong infantry uh, so let's have a quick look at what's going down anyway on this right hand side at the start i'm going to be using plenty of these milan 2 squads i've also got the fashion jäger Führer that's starting in the recon zone that's going to be capturing this town uh, then i've also got a couple of these jäger avkada and I've also got the Fuchs Rasset. This is the radar Fuchs with the exceptional optics. I do actually find the exceptional optics vehicles pretty useful, honestly. They're really, really good for sitting further back and discovering things in tree lines, basically. Behind those, I've got two Citadungs. We've got four Fliegerfaust. I've got a Striker, a Leopard 2A3, and two Gepards that are going to be pretty much all sitting in the town, more or less. And my idea at the start of the game was to hold Alpha and then help Helvel in the mid at Delta. And I did send a, a CV to also capture Charlie early on. So we're going to be able to capture Alpha and Charlie relatively early on and get ourselves potentially a little bit of a point advantage. But I've got my Falschmjäger Führer in the town here quite far up so that if enemy forces did come in, I could jump them forwards and then we can give extra veterancy to our units here. Yeah, the Milan 2 squads have arrived. They are unloading. And I put them in positions where they have decent long-range line of sight. So I can potentially side shot or just you know, straight up kill transports in the front armor as they come down these roads. So all of these, as you can see, if I place my cursor over them with the C keyed held for the LOS, you can see that that's the case. So if, for example, this BMP-1 started coming down the road, we'd be able to pop it. So yeah, I'm, off, I'm into position and not too much happening early on. We do get the plus four tick going, which is quite nice, but the pixel asset hasn't seen anything yet with its radar. And I also have the striker sitting next to that with its swing fire missile system. These are pretty cool actually, because the back swings up and then fires the HGM out. Very cool. Yeah, pretty chill at the start. And uh, Helvel has managed to bring in like an Alfgarda here to get a little bit of recon in the middle. He also managed to get a bunch of these Fauschmjäger into this top side tree line. So we are going to get a little bit of information early on. And now I'm starting to bring in my own troops to the center to start pushing through here as well. But we've got to be a bit careful, especially with all the infantry that I'm bringing in. Because they do have one of these awesome MI8 gunships with all of these Gatling cannons on them. Or Gatling miniguns, I guess. I don't know what you'd call them. Just Gatling guns. I, probably, I guess is the best description. Yeah. Pretty awesome firepower on this thing. Unfortunately, the guns don't do as much damage as I would have expected them to do. But I'm starting to get the feeling that it is enough, at least. Because otherwise it could become quite obnoxious. Unless they maybe made it more expensive so that the, the, air, the helicopter could be... Uh, you know, better. And I, I'm kind of sad they didn't do that with the MI24 VP, actually. And this is something that I think would be nice in Warno, is if they did make some units stronger, but they made them just, like, cost generally more in order to bring them in, particularly when there's, like, low availability of them. So it used to be that the MI24 VP that you could get with the 39th Guards had a, like, 30 mil cannon that was super strong at, like, deleting infantry and could... Well, it's basically very similar to the Apache's 30 mil, where it could... If it flew over anything, it would kill it. 
But now it's very, very weak because they changed it back to the helicopter variant that it was supposed to be when previously it was the uh, strafing variant uh, of the SU-25, I believe, or something like that. So it was acting like an airplane gun, which was absolutely crazy. It was maybe a little bit overtuned, but... PT-76 going down here to the Leopard 1A5. Nice little catch there from Hellville, but the MI-8T moving up here is not good for my approaching infantry, and I'm going to immediately start purchasing two Gepard 1A1s. And one thing that I probably should point out, and it's a good tip, really, is always make sure that you have what you need to counter what would attack your forces before it gets there. So in this case, I could have got really, really... Uh, done in by this MI-8T if it saw all of my infantry and decided to fly over and start shooting them because I don't have my AA there but having the AA there preemptively uh, could have been a lot better. In this case though Helvel does manage to catch one of those SU-22s and shoots them down so that's good. Nice kill there for him. Takes out that cluster bomber that could potentially be a problem for my Leopard 2A3s as well. Now, that's one thing that uh, the second Panzer Grand is pretty good for at the moment. I don't know if it's going to get changed. I kind of hope it does. But basically, the Leopard 2A3s, you can get about 12 of them in this division at the moment if you only bring them in at one vet. And that is a lot of Leopard 2A3s, especially considering they are not far off one of the best uh, like tanks, basically, in the game right now. Oh, Tornado F3 having a bit of a dogfight there with the SU-22. Does manage to shoot it down. Look at that gorgeous aircraft. He's going to take some hits from the Shilka. Ultimately going to be able to get away with that. So nice job again by Helvel. He was getting all the action early on in this game. And we're finally bumping into some enemy infantry here. Let's push all the way through. But I'm in a pretty good spot. I've got the Pioneer with the hand flambatron which is able to keep these guys on the move so I can do plenty more damage. I've got the 2A3 that's able to engage close range. Fauschemjäger there doing damage, extra Citadel squad as well. I've also got my Fauschemjäger leader now here which is going to be able to make a lot of these squads 2 or 3 vet and also potentially capture the sector. So Helvel managing to catch out a couple of T-55s here with his Panzerfaust 3s. These Panzerfaust 3s on the Fauschemega, they do have 21 penetration at the moment, which is pretty nuts. I don't know if that's going to change. It probably will. Of course, do remember that this is early access, uh, so therefore things are subject to change. But at the moment, Fauschemega is really strong on the West Germans because they have that Panzerfaust 3, uh, which is just great for demolishing armor at close range. T-55 of Halvor. Getting a pretty decent engagement there considering it was damaged. And Halvor now trying to push into this sector as well. But what we need to do, what I need to do, is basically counter cap uh, Delta ASAP. Because set a plus three for our opponents and we obviously want to stop that ASAP. Lots of munitions coming in on the side of St. Blyde Fire again. I do have a CH-53 coming in. Now the idea with this cargo helicopter was just constantly fix up any squads that had been damaged. So in this case, the Pioneer's down to two men. The Fauschemig is down to four. Also, the Pioneers could use more hand flambatron ammo. So they're going to be moving them back to the supply get them back to full strength and then carry on again. It's, you can see I'm doing it here with this Panzer again. Moving them back out of line of sight with this Special Zavklava and I'm going to be able to fix them up and then push them back into the fight. Meanwhile the Leopard 2A3 engaging the Special Zavklava. If the Sitterungs get in range probably start doing some better damage there. But I do back off the Leopard 2A3 because it was being hit by an HGM. So I've got some Scorpions on the way now, and also some Scimitars. Scimitars, really good at close range for dealing with enemy infantry, can pin them down quite quickly. And then the Scorpions, they are decent at taking out enemy transports and also lighter armor at close ranges. I'm going to be bringing in some of these artillery pieces. 
these M110s. The reason I'm bringing them in is to pretty much RT the HGM that was firing at me initially, and then I can use it for fire support in other ways against infantry if I come across them. Finally managed to clean up the Special Zavglada anyway, and this Panzergrand that went round this way did manage to get to this location, so I know that there's not really too much going on there. Gepards. I did end up moving these forwards to take out the Mutchards and BTR. I do need to be a bit careful of their RPG. If I get too close, the RPG can kill the Gepards, particularly if they get a side shot. It might just one-shot me. But here comes an SU-22M4P, and unfortunately I didn't really get to turn off them in time so I just kind of left them on we do manage to shoot that down I was he was unlucky not to get a kill there it is a 50 50 50 percent chance basically panzer guns do get found and taken out very quickly by the t-55s my leopard I move it forwards I'm gonna take the shot against these uh, t-55s there we go oh another SE-22 coming over the anti-radar missile this time hitting the mark onto the 1a1 Leopard 2A3, going to have to back off the Zeta Gems doing a decent chunk of damage. I did, however, manage to damage quite a lot of their T-55, so definitely reducing the effectiveness, but quite a lot still to deal with. The Citadel is going to try and do a runner here as they come under fire, and the idea is to you know, send them back to the helicopter so that I can bring them back to the fight. And uh, meanwhile, they're going to be supported by the Scorpions and Scimitars. I do also have the F-104 coming over. This thing has some pretty good penetration on its air-to-ground missile, but unfortunately missing that first one. The second one comes in, does actually get the hit onto the T-55, blows that sky high. Very nice indeed. It would be cool if these maybe fired a bit faster, but... I would have to come around basically for a second pass. But yeah, 30 AP with the 40% hit chance. The 40% hit chance is unreliable at best, but it means that with the 30 penetration, you more or less one shot anything you do hit. So that's nice. Uh, getting my Flieger Faust into position here. Got the Faust Schmig and the Pioneers now moving back up. And I've also got my extra Scorpions now on the way. Now for whatever reason, I forgot to move my scorpions with my scimitars. Keeping them together is quite important because the scimitars can't deal with a T-55, but a scorpion probably can, or at least try. So the scorpions need to be there to accompany the scimitars, and the scimitars can help against enemy infantry if they become a problem. So just kind of fast moving up the road there to get them closer, and then we're going to be attack moving through the cover to get into where we want to be. Look at my Panzergrens here, they're going for a little stroll up the mountain. Now I take them off there on purpose because if I manage to get over the bridge there, then I'm going to take fire from anything that's able to see that, which is quite a lot. Some more SU-22s coming in from Adoy. Going to be going for my Gepards again. No chance there. Bringing them in in twos is really smart. And this is something that I definitely recommend. If you're ever using these SU-22s, always bring them in in pairs. Because it means that you've got that extra chance to hit your target. Like you've got two chances of 50% rather than just one. And that means you're much more likely to get your uh, kill on target. There's Tornado. Doing a pretty good job there of trying to control the skies. They're forcing back a lot of these aircraft, but getting very deep now in a bit of a bad spot with that SU-22 on its tail. does, however, manage to get out, so that was nice. Helvel doing really, really well bringing in these tornadoes to help us out right now. But my Gepards are all dead. Are all dead. They've died. Uh, the Gepards, I was having trouble turning them off in time, and I tried to group them in order to turn them off as a group. But then I realized that that kind of made it even harder. Because when you have multiple units grouped, you can't see their weapons at the moment. Again, there might be something that gets changed, but for now it kind of became a bit difficult to micro the on and off seed. 
And that is something that was a skill in Wargamer Dragon that a lot of people had to use in order to avoid seed. And it, it's the same in Warner. You have to be kind of on the ball. You see a seed aircraft coming in, you turn off your, your AA immediately, and then you can turn it back on when the enemy aircraft flies the opposite direction, like it's flying away from you. Anyway, we're making some decent ground now. I've got the Leopard 1A5s coming in to accompany the 2A3s. The 1A5s going to be very good value uh, for money taking out these T55s. So that's what I'm bringing them up for. And you can see my Scorpion still supporting the Panzergren and the Fauschenjäger as we move through these trees. And this is a good example of a unit where a scimitar would be really, really nice. Uh, meanwhile, at the back here, my Tornado trying its best to shoot down the Su-22M. 4P, but really, really struggling to do so. So yeah, what you can do with the, with the scorpions and scimitars in this case is kill off the pioneers because the pioneers can't really fire at the scorpions very effectively. I do lose my tornado. That gets shot down. Wasn't really having much success myself with aircraft throughout this game, but Elvul certainly was, so that was good for our team. Yeah, Scorpion, you can see moving up there, pushing the Pioneers out. I managed to keep my Falschmjäger alive just. But as my pi uh, as my Scorpions try and move up to finish off that squad, I do get shot at, so I have to fall back. And that Leopard, I managed to get into cover just in time, but was taking shots. So we're in the sector now. The enemy command, I think, was here. So... They ended up having to move it out of the sector, and that's why I left this attack beacon here to let Helvel know that you know there's potentially a leader there. I also, of course, do have my artillery, uh, which I believe I forgot about <laughs> after I brought it in for a little while, which is something that I often do. I'm so not used to using artillery as support, <laughs> but it's such a staple in both of the games that I play, like Still Division 2 and Warno. I don't know why I just don't use it that much. <laughs> Uh, I think it's just because I generally find it like almost cheesy to use too much artillery, but in this case the M110s are really cool. And you see eventually I'm going to put down a artillery command there. I'm not a massive fan of these PC-76s. I think they'd be good for maybe taking on enemy like mechanized forces, you know, with like the if I was using more Marders, those PTs would be pretty useful. But since I'm using the 2A3 here and also like the 1A5s, the PTs just don't really do too well. But the SU-22 able to take up my Leopard 2A3 nicely, so that's not too bad. Uh, Citadungs going to be moving up. I, of course, lost my infantry here, so going to need to replace them. That's what the Citadungs are for. I've got my Tornado in. And that got... A little bit too close to the sun there. Got to be super careful with that. Thing is, if you don't have an order on your aircraft, as particularly like interceptors, and then an enemy aircraft comes in, they'll automatically try and fire to or fly towards it, even if the even after the enemy aircraft is evac'd. So you've got to be super careful that you don't like leave them floating around unmicroed, because otherwise they will eventually fly over enemy AA when the enemy brings in an aircraft. It is nice to keep the air aircraft around, though, uh, just so that you can prevent enemy airstrikes for the time being. Because it's it's very, kind of unlikely that if you have a unit like the Tornado F3, for example, or even the Eagle hanging about, then you know people aren't really going to bring in aircraft. Unfortunately... Helvel did lose his seed tornado there. That was unfortunate. Those things aren't cheap. But in the meantime, I'm going to bring in up another recon here, the Fuchsrasset. That's going to be there to accompany my tanks as we kind of push forwards to the other side of the center sector. And I've also got the BO, BO-105 here, uh, covering off the left side with recon and, well, the immediate vicinity. Now this is relatively safe because of line of sight. 
the AA would ha basically have to come up to here in the open more or less to shoot this and if it did I'd have line of sight with my own leopards so I'm relatively happy with my positioning right now Citroen's in the tree line here got all the Fliegerfaust moving up as well so that I can start to shoot down any more seed planes that come in although I am still relying a bit on luck there with a 35% accuracy on those but all quiet on the right hand side I brought in all these troops I even brought in a recon helicopter on this right hand side just to make sure that I wasn't missing anything there but ultimately no one attacked on that side it's all coming in for this center sector which is to be expected because this is obviously worth a lot more SU-22 there <laughs> kind of lucky to get out honestly had a lot of shots fly towards it but we're now in the lead just about with tickets our opponents have just decapped the center sector but we do see the Fauschmjegerfuhrer that is doing that so I'm able to kind of push up here with the 2A3 and the 1A5 start putting pressure on them they're going to back it out of the sector it's going to be ours soon SU-22 did come in with the anti-radar missile it's going to kill that Gepard but my Gepard does secure the kill onto that aircraft so I wasn't too unhappy with that engagement my T2A3 does trade for one of the GM1s and then goes down after now that's not a terrible trade for me like yes a T72 is worth way less than a 2A3 you can see it actually like a solid you know 80 points less but the thing is with the T72 GM1s is they are in pretty low supply for the 7th Panzer Division they don't get much available of them so killing them is really good for us and I'm happy to trade Leopard 2A3s to kill T72 GM1s because I have many more 2A3s and I think in Warno availability is almost more important than the cost of the units you are trading so the fact that I have a lot of heavy tanks is a big advantage but I do lose my recon there which is unfortunate because I wasn't able to shoot the AT that I wanted to here so instead we're going to be using my artillery again these are getting low on ammo one thing I do like though about the M110s compared to other tube artillery is that because they only fire salvos of two their first shots almost always hit the center of where they fire whereas if you were to use tube artillery that fired like in salvos of 10 it would go from like left to right yeah, SU-22 is coming in with those clusters again. Leopard 1A5 goes down. That's about it, though. And my Gepards are all dead again already, so that's not great. Tornado does come in to deal with these two MiGs. Managed to shoot one down. But unfortunately, enemy AA returns the favor. I lose the Tornado. Very unfortunate. SU-22 coming over the top of all my AA, but didn't really have much ammo left these guys are out I have though brought up an M113 it's going to be able to get them their missiles back but we still hold the center sector and Hellfall's done a good job of getting this infantry further up which means we don't have to be worried about the enemy capturing the center sector on that side now I did end up using all of the supply in the CH-53 it's currently fixing up the leopard so I did bring in another one and that's going to be sitting there hopefully out of line of sight for the foreseeable future in order to fix up more tanks and resupply more infantry squads. Nice bombing strike though from our enemy there it does demolish some of Helvel's forces as they engage the T-72s. The 1A5 is moving across there, engaging the T-72s. Any time a Leopard 1A5 kills a T-72, really bad news for the 7th Panzer Division. Because the T-72s are actually more expensive than a Leopard 1A5. They're like 110 points. And again, availability is an issue. So you just keep running into that problem with these East German divisions. Though in that case, Aftala 
doing its job nicely. But Depp 185 securing a T-55 kill. So all the Fliegerfaust, or at least these ones on the hill here, are, you know, resupplied. I've got the ones in the town there resupplied as well. Not able to get that SU-22 though. And we are going to lose this tank in the open, the Leopard 105, to the new enemy tanks coming down the road. Nice hit by the Tornado IDS onto the SU-22. I did have this one hanging about. Trying to find my Gepards. Does end up taking out that Gepard, or missing the Gepard on the left there. But this time, not so lucky going over all these Flakerfausts. And we shoot him down. You can just see how many I needed there. That was four Flakerfausts here. And I've got four or three Flakerfausts left now on this right side. So anytime an SU-22 flies over, it takes seven missiles, which have a 35% chance. Slightly less than 35% chance, because you've got to consider the um, percentage here, the ECM. SU-22 still getting through though. Leopard 2A3 going down. Fortunately, Helvel had two Gepards on the way, which finished the job. Here comes the SU-22 again with those anti-radar missiles. And one goes down. I feel like whenever I use these, they just never, ever, ever hit. But when I'm playing against them, they seem to just do really, really well. In that case, Worked out as planned, you know, like one, one missile hitting, one missile missing is the most likely outcome with those. If you can get both missiles to fire, that is. It's now a bit of mechanised action, the Marder 183s supporting their Panzer Grenadiers and taking on the Fauschum Jäger with the Metis launcher. And meanwhile, some rockets coming from quite far away. Initially I thought they were firing off the hill. This can be a little bit immersion breaking sometimes with the, uh, the rockets coming through the terrain. But yeah, I managed to get the 2A3 out of there on one health. Got a new 2A3 on the way. And the Panzer Grand, I'm trying to get rid of these TO55s. TO55s can be super nasty. Leopard 2A3, they're able to take out a T55 AM2. The Fashion Mega Metis making my life difficult though. I'm going to have to start engaging them. Now, further back, I do have a couple more Leopard 2A3s. I did keep bringing stuff in, and the reason that it's back here is A, because it's probably getting fixed, and B, I bring it in further back so that it uses this road that comes up the hill here rather than. Uh, this road where my scorpions and scimitars are because that's a lot more risky but shot down another SU-22 I think it was actually another two SU-22 M4Ps went down which is really big because it means that you know as long as we've got Gepars left we're going to be able to control the skies pretty well I've got this double Gepard going on which we're able to do a nice amount of damage SU-22 does go down there now these scorpions we're going to be pulling off the road because there's a bunch of T-55s now pushing me pretty damn hard. MiG's going to go down. SU-22 coming in with a really nasty napalm strike onto all my Fliegerfaust. Suicides for that. SU-22 coming in with the strike again there, but this time missing. SU-22 goes down. We just killed a ton of aircraft in that engagement, so we are looking very good right now. But... Here comes the 4th and the 7th. And if there's one thing that the 4th and 7th can both do well is amass a large amount of tanks and push all at once. And even for something like a Leopard 2A3, this is really kind of tough to deal with. So what I'm going to have to do here is micro quite carefully what I'm firing at. As long as I don't let maybe more than 2 or 3 fire at me at the same time, the Leopard 2A3 should be all good in engaging these tanks. So just kind of sitting here at the moment, firing away, popping these tanks as much as we can, doing damage. Extended tank engagement. I've got the scimitars moving through on the left hand side there. I've also got the F4Fs now coming in with the bombing strikes. Now for whatever reason these didn't bomb, drop their bombs. I think one of them 
their target died because it didn't give it a fire position command and the other one uh, I might have cancelled or something by accident. That's so probably my bad. Yeah, Leopard 2A3 is going to go down there eventually. But I have got another Leopard 2A3 that probably should have been engaging the whole time and just wasn't. But with two Leopard 1A1s and a Leopard 1A5 to help it out, I should be able to push up again in just a moment. Big Faust was taking damage. Fashion Mega Fiora, making sure to fall that back. I probably should have brought in another leader sooner. Currently, we've only got this one, so I've got to be super careful. MiG 21 coming in with that bombing strike. The kill onto the Fashion Mega Fiora as they ran away. I think it might have also been targeting the Flink Faust, but yeah, MiG 21 does get shot down. Artillery is now coming in onto my CH 53, and that's going to have to fall back. It's like an emergency pull away there. <laughs> Almost nose dives into the ground. Scimitars did a great job here actually getting up on the backside because it did. we did bump into a bunch of their AA. See the Cub having to back off there and we also killed a Shulka so that was nice. A little sneaky move around the side. Here comes the artillery once again. Just looking to clean out whatever's in this area. And well, found the T-55. It was capturing the sector, you know, contesting the sector. We ended up taking it out with the Leopard 1A1, so that was really good for us. Leopard 2A3, still having a good job, or having a good time, sorry. Firing across the open here. Look at all the tanks now. <laughs> this is just like all the wrecks of all these T-55s, T-72s. So much stuff here got destroyed. This always happens on this map. I actually kind of like this map though because there is opportunities to you know, push on the left and right hand side but some games they just revolve entirely around the center area and that's okay. I mean there's lots of different tactical decisions. I'm focusing the center quite hard right now because both players on the enemy team are doing the same so it's kind of hard to ignore. I could have maybe tried to put a little bit of pressure on the right hand side here but that's a long way to go. And I have no idea what's there. So another M113 coming in. That's going to help me out a lot. Because it's going to keep the Fauci Mega topped off. The Leopard 105, I do let that go down. The Fauci Mega probably should have moved up sooner. Because they do have that Panzerfaust 3 that's really good against tanks at close range. Particularly these like T-55s. Now... Uh, they've managed to counter cap the center once again so here comes the artillery on the most likely location as to where they've got their command Fauchmeyer just uh, just chewing things up the extra veterancy was just so nice on these since they come in at a three vet base with these weapons against equal number squads they just perform really really well Bit unfortunate that I did get stunned there though, because they are on normal cohesion. It is something that I do think needs to be changed, unfortunately, in the, in the game at the moment. I'm not a huge fan of the cohesion system, because you can get randomly stunned and it is irritating when that happens. There's no indication that you're going to get stunned, it just kind of happens. Uh, anyway, Sutterungs, they are going to be coming in to support against these Modschutzen, because our opponents had managed to kind of sneak stuff through the middle here. And one thing that is a weakness actually of the Germans is that they don't have any strong like rocket pod helicopters. They rely almost solely on HGM helicopters. And what this means is you don't really have a good choice for dealing with something like this where there's like a single BMP-1 that comes through and kills both of my munitions helicopters. Like a helicopter would be a great choice there because there's no AA and it's able to just freely fire on those ground targets. Fortunately in this case I do have the Leopard 2A3 so the BMP-1 should die relatively easily. Uh, but yeah, it's not ideal that I don't have a helicopter because a helicopter would be good not only for that BMP-1 but also for the infantry squad here that's moving through. There was the SBW-70 uh, there as well that was trying to hit my uh, transports that I'm trying to sell. And finally, well, my Fauschmega gets bombed. 
Uh, the Fashion Mega Führer has gone down, but we did manage to take down the SU-22. Uh, thankfully, Helvel does have this Leopard 1A5, so that worked out quite nicely. Also, Pioneers, I guess from the SPW-70s or something, do come over the ridge here and they bump into both of my Gepards and a Leopard 2A3. It's probably like the worst target that they could have had because the Pioneers don't have any form of AT. Like, and they can get in range with their satchels and kill things like the Gepards, but they wouldn't be able to kill a Leopard. And then just get mowed down there. So, Fashion Mega Fiora, I have brought in a second one. I think I had already had it on the way to try and double cut the center. But Helvel already had his Leopard 1A5 here after the first Fashion Mega got killed. So, Fashion Mega Metis going to get taken out on the edge of the hill there. You've got to be super careful when using the hills like this. Because whilst you do, like, have a lot of line of sight you're also able to be seen by a lot of things and generally like having the high ground there, there's no real advantage to that we I mean, briefly spot the fashion mega filler that's counter capping i'm going to put my m1 110s on target these things are just absolute beasts i've had, I had a bunch of m113s hanging out with those I'm going to be moving them away now since they run out of ammo but a big push now building up here from adoy and I'm going to be targeting that since uh, the enemy command did move out of the sector. Here we go. Artillery fires away. Check out this. The damage from these shots, if they direct it, is really, really nice, actually. I'm able to really damage and affect the cohesion of all of these units, which means they're going to be pretty much one shot for all of my Leopard 1A5s and the 2A3s and so on. But that's unfortunately it. My M110s, they were going to get some really good shots in there, but wasn't to be as the game does come to a close after 35 minutes and 32 seconds. So yeah, a really solid game with the second Panzergren. It's a real tough matchup for our opponents. Uh, St. Blyfire and Adoy, they played well, but the 7th Panzer Division and the 4th Mudschutzen, I feel like really struggle against the heavy armor uh, in the open range engagements. Like the 2A3s just slice them to pieces. Like you can see the T55 AM2 is going down, the T55 A there. You know, it's not a particularly impressive kill list, but I've got 12 of these. So you can imagine if I can keep killing stuff like that with one of those, it's great. Also, check out this Valshimega. Valshimega is, again, just proving how good their AT weapon is against these medium tanks. With a 21 penetration, super, super good against these T-55. So use that to great effect. Leopard 1A5 is getting a, quite a decent few, amount of kills there. And again, as I was mentioning before, trading Leopard 2A3 for a T-72 GM1, not a bad trade because... They have way less T-72 GM1s than we do Leopards. Uh, the Gepard's doing very well. I had lots of SU-22 kills, even the SU-22 M4Ps, which are the anti-radar um, seed aircraft. Killing those is really, really good. And I think in the end, they just kind of ran out of these. Now, you can get quite a lot of cards of them. And honestly, I've, I've really been considering kind of stacking up my decks with these uh, seed aircraft against the German divisions because when the Germans run out of Gepards, their AA becomes very weak because they have to rely on the Fliegerfaust, particularly with the second Panzergram where they don't have any other alternatives. So, yeah, the SU-22 M4P really kind of essential at the moment. And bringing them in pairs, as I mentioned, really good way of breaking down enemy AA because you're much more likely to get the kill every time with that extra missile. Uh, particularly since they don't fire both missiles at the same time. They fire like one and then you have to do a loop and you fire another one because they don't reload fast enough. But again, another 2A3 doing well. Uh, another 2A3 killing a T-72 and a T-55. That's pretty much all I need to do. Just keep using the Leopards to beat back the worse armor of the 7th and 4th and then we kind of we win those open range engagements and i guess the only way that they can really win that is maybe by smoking and trying to use infantry but then the german infantry is also very strong right now and the germans in general are very strong right now <laughs> but of course it will probably change at some point we will see but that is it hopefully you guys enjoyed that game i thought it was a fun one to watch it was definitely fun to play and uh 
I think everybody you know, kind of enjoyed themselves in this one. So yeah, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.